call the uh, workshop meeting in order. Um, the Runnymede Board of Education workshop meeting is called to order. The Board of Education is in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975 entitled the Open Public Meeting Act. Time, date, location of this meeting was appropriately advertised by notifying the retrospect as well as posting notices in Federal Hall, Runnymede Post Office, Mary Bolt School, Lyon Bingham School, Grace County School, and the Runnymede Public District website. Dr. McCarran, would you like to take a roll call for the workshop? Ms. Adair, Ms. Beebe, Mr. Buckon, Ms. Davidson, Ms. Farry, Ms. Panzarello, Here. Ms. Smith, Here. Ms. Torillo, Here. Ms. Spaulding. Here. Yeah, we're all here. So before we move along and look through the agenda, um, Dr. McCarran is going to have, give us a New Jersey Ask presentation at this time. Thank you. So beautiful and colorful and wonderful. Hello, everyone. Okay. So New Jersey Ask presentation. Tried to summarize it into the least number of slides possible for you. Um, this was actually the last year that the New Jersey ASK would be given in grades three through eight for students in language arts and mathematics. Next year, students will be moved. This year, I apologize, we're in this year. Um, this year, students will be taking the park assessment, which can be online based, but then there's also a paper based method for that, and they will be doing that assessment for language arts and math um, in the spring months. New Jersey S will only be given this year in the area of science for fourth and for eighth grade. And that will continue to happen since the park does not address the science area. Um, just for an overview, what I did was I did a breakdown of each grade level, how many students were proficient and how many were partially proficient. So as you look through, one of the things I tried to point out was it's the number of students listed as partially proficient. That means that they scored below a 200 point value. The maximum number of points that students can achieve is 300. Anything up to 199 would be partially proficient. 200 to 249 would be proficient. And then 250 to 300 would be advanced proficient. For each area, what I did was I marked down how many students were partially proficient. Underneath that, you'll see that I have a highlighted section that says how many students were within a 10 point of proficiency. So when you look at the third grade language arts, you'll see that 29 students were partially proficient in language arts in third grade last year between the two elementary schools. Of those 29 students who were partially proficient, there were 10 students who received between a 190 and a 199 on the New Jersey S, which would have changed that percentage greatly um, for those few points. Now, for anywhere from three to five points um, in language arts and mathematics can raise your percent, your proficiency level dramatically. Um, Mr. Iannucci, today, how many okay. questions, I'm sorry, on the science New Jersey asked, what was the statement that was made at the workshop? 33% of the questions to be proficient in the science portion of the So 33%, so that means that out of three questions, they need to get one question correctly to be proficient on the science section of New Jersey S. So it shows you the discrepancy for partial proficiency to proficiency. Another large difference this year with the New Jersey S was that each year what they would do is they would pilot questions among students. So in 2012 and 2013, questions were put into the New Jersey S for language arts and math to see how students would handle them, all based on the common core. And what they do is, depending on how the students respond across the state, they will either then decide to use those questions or not. In 2014, the questions that were tested in the prior two years were actually counted in the 2014 administration. Because when we discuss PART, what it is is it's a number of states working together to put out an assessment. So New Jersey's taking their resources from the state and the other states involved are all taking their resources to try and create one assessment that will be used across the board. So they're taking what everyone's using as positively and pulling it all together into one assessment. Um, and you can say across the board there were a number of students averaging about 10 
who were within a 10 point of proficiency of going from partially proficient to proficient. Here, what I did was I tried, I took a look at our 2013 scores and compared them with our 2014 scores to look at the difference. When you look at our language arts proficiency in third grade, it went from 40% of the students were proficient in third grade in 2013 to 63% in 2014. So that's a 23% increase, which is fantastic. But something you need to also consider is the fact that the 2013 students who took the test in third grade are different than the 2014 students who took the test in fourth grade. So it looks positive, and you can, you can make a comparison that way, but you're comparing apples one year to oranges the next. I enjoy both apples and oranges, but it's two separate, two different types of fruit there. Um, the other way that you can look at the scores is to actually go down. So look at the third grade scores from 2013, where it was 40%, and then you go down to the fourth grade 2014 scores. Same students, different skills. And in that situation, you can see it went from a 40% to a 48% which means 8% 8, 8 of our more students were proficient from one year to the next. And as you go down, you can see in language arts, the scores for the most part go down with the exception of our 6th to 7th grade students, and then 70 to 81 in 8th grade, an 11% increase. So, moving forward and looking at this, when we look at our 12-13 scores and we see that it was 40% proficient, one of the things we had done that year was we brought in a literacy consultant who was working with teachers during the 12-13 school year. Teachers were given a lot of new materials, a lot of new things, the Daily Five, um, changing the way in which they were grouping their students, Rigby. And then you can see in 2013-14, last year, when they actually had the, when the literacy consultant was no longer there and had moved over to Bowles, that's, we see a much a bigger difference, a much larger difference in the proficiency level. Which ideally, if it was more common core based question in 2014, shows us that we are going in the correct direction in the fact with what we have in place, the literacy consultant who we are using, the technology that we've put in place also. When you look at the math scores, you can say, um, once again, 13 compared to 14, where there were positives and where things went down. Um, one thing that stood out to us when we reviewed these scores was when you look at the 13 third grade to the 14 fourth grade. And we go down this way, it goes from 70% to 63, 74% to 72, 70% to 63%, 78% to 52%, and 76% to 63%. So there was, a, there was a decrease, significant in some cases, from students in 13, 2013 to students in 2014. One of the things that we're currently looking at is, and knowing the types of questions that we're now being asked on the New Jersey ASK, we're more focused on the Common Core and preparing students for the ARC assessment, is that we might need to look at our math program that we're currently using. Many math series will say that they are Common Core aligned in terms of what we're using. Um, but when you look at it, it might not truly be Common Core. It might align with the standards, but it's not teaching the students the skills necessary um, to have that higher order thinking that's taking place. One thing that we will be doing across all um, our elementary and also our middle, middle school, we are piloting a different program this year that is more, is teachers feel is aligned to the Common Core and is much more student friendly. So we do have that coming in, and along with that, we will be having a math consultant as a part of this pilot who will be working with our staff members in both, for both regular ed and also our special education students. What math, what, what, are, you, what are you guys looking at? The program that we're looking at is Envisioned, which is through Pearson, mm -hmm. um, and then it's also Course 3. We had, we had already invested in Course 1 and 2 mm -hmm. in our 7th grade classes but we're gonna be looking at course three for our eighth grade class that is not already involved in the algebra program. Is that a T at the end of that? What was, it, what was the name course of it? Course three is the one program for eighth grade that right. we're looking at, right. and then it's Envisions, E-N Visions. Both are through Pearson. Okay. Pearson, P-N-E-R? Yeah. 
P-E-A-R. That's the way. And that's a warning. And to look, one of the things that we're currently doing now is we're looking at the disaggregated data, which breaks down into okay. sections by grade level, how students perform. And what you can see from that is that in many cases, our students performed extremely high in three out of the five sections. And then it might be out of two specific sections where within a grade level, that academics need to be increased. And as we move more towards the Common Core, it's looking at what resources we currently have in place and making sure that we're providing our teachers and our students with everything that we possibly can. In language arts, we have more of a novel-based curriculum in the upper grades, and we use Rigby in the lower grades. Many people might just use that by itself, and that's fine because it's a packaged program. Sadly, I feel, as an administrative team, we didn't feel like it was enough resources for teachers. So the past year was spent building up our language arts resources because our math scores in previous years looked, looked oh, decent. Awesome. There, weren't, there weren't really issues with the math scores. What's interesting is now that we change and we add in the common core questions and those are now counting towards the students, we now see a difference. And one of the things um, Mr. Wink and myself were talking about individual student scores today. And in many cases, you'll see dramatic increases for some students, and you'll see dramatic decreases for others. And there's no consistency or rhyme and reason as to why. But for one student, it might be much easier to answer a question where they have to explain everything. And they need to write out the answer, and they need to explain how they got from point A to point B to point C. For another student, they might just want to tell you how they got to point C, period, and not tell you the A and B behind it, which is what they're moving away from, is looking at the correct answer only, but they're looking at the process in which you follow. Any questions on New Jersey S? Now, I, well, I have a question as far as the student math series is coming in. What are the numbers as far as um, student success with this program? Do you have any data in here yet that's showing what revisions will do for There is data that shows what revisions is done across other districts. Okay. The one thing you need to keep in mind is that many times these programs, for example, Everyday Math, mm -hmm. was created in Chicago, used in Chicago public schools, worked wonders. Chicago Public Schools is not running in New Jersey. It's not the same demographic per se, right, and, I, and, and it's I not guess. necessarily the same buy-in. Right. One of the things that I'm excited about with the innovative <coughs> program that we are piloting is that there's been tremendous teacher, there's been teacher feedback. There's been positive teacher feedback from it, and even in looking at the material, sample materials that we received, looking through it and saying, oh, we never had this available to us, or oh, look, we're gonna have this component and looking at what's available to them online to use within their classrooms with smart boards and things like that. And that's starting when? Piloting, we're yeah. gonna start getting materials in in the next few, in the next okay. few weeks. So say back to school night, it was still like, we, 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 were still, we were still discussing how we could work the pilot because we are a small district. So with a piloting, with piloting materials, they give you the materials. Um, hey, go ahead. About seven or eight years ago, we were very successful in yes. New Jersey yes. yes. with everyday math. Yes. And last year we had one of the directors we got was this year, <coughs> don't jump out. When I first took over super don't jump out and buy a math series because nobody had anything right. that was aligned with the common core. Right. Now that it's been a year we've done mm -hmm. you know, these five different districts and they, just, they have things now. So now yes, we are going to have to shift over. Fun fact, everyday math just can't, it's, it's a totally different concept. Oh, sure, well that's, that's my next question as far as educating all of us here. I mean, I know everyday math is more of a spiral. Cyclical spiral. Yes. spiral. Exactly. Yeah. Where, now how does that, how does this envisions compare to a spiral format? One of the things that teachers have been encouraged to do from the state is they offer something called the model curriculum, which offers five units. It's made very clear though that the model curriculum is not a curriculum, it's a framework. And what it does is it gives you an order in which you should be teaching things in a sequential way to, for students to best understand. With Envisions, it, follow, um, it, follows that it follows that order and provides multiple resources to um, 
reach all students, which I think is a huge component okay. that might not always have been available previously. But we want to make sure that we have resources available, and it does follow an order for teachers that makes sense and builds for students. So it's no longer the spiraling, it's they're learning specific skills, and those specific skills then build on for them to achieve the next skill that they're going to hit. Oh, okay, so it's more of a pyramid effect versus a spiral? It's, a, it's building up. It's like steps. a yeah, steps. Now back to step one. The materials are covered in step <coughs> one. Are they reviewed anywhere else during the course of the school year, or is it just because it's a stepping program that's reviewed as During the school year, mm -hmm. what will happen is um, on our next <coughs> professional development day, which will be not the 10th, but the 13th, we have a full day PD day. Every teacher who's participating <coughs> in the pilot will be meeting with the representatives from Pearson, along with math coaches, regular and special education, to go over the materials and find out the best way for implementing those materials. Prior to that professional development day, the materials will be received in the district, so that way teachers will have the time and opportunity to go through them. Um, teachers who will be working in the pilot have already been spoken to and are excited about um, participating. Is that every grade, every classroom? The elementary grades school? that we will be working with are third, fourth, sixth, eighth. Okay, so then not every student will be affected by that. Correct. And it'll it's, it's it'll 50, continue to It's use. not every third grade class. It's we them. will be sharing the resources because we will have them available to us. So our teachers, I will can honestly say, collaborate very well. Um, as departments and as grade levels. Right. So if there's resources available that are benefiting students, like I said, not one program is the best program. I think that when you can pull as you need it and as you identify student needs, that's what we need to do. So I think Envisions could be, based on what we looked at, have the most value for us. And you think that, <laughs> will you be able to, we probably would be able to track the scores for next year, all of the students whose classes went with admissions and who went with, uh, who stayed with everyday math? <coughs> yes and no, because next year will be park and it's a baseline, which means absolutely nothing. it's nothing. So uh, next year I will be presenting the park assessment, but it's gonna, there's nothing to compare it with. And um, ideally though, since other states are taking it, we will be able to have a comparison as far as how our students fared against other students in that grade level. Right. Similar to the map scores. It's not going to show growth. It won't show growth. It would not show growth at that point. Okay. Where so we could see growth. growth. How do you measure the growth as far as the rest sheet that staff's STOs? STOs are usually based on a specific time period, right. like within a unit, okay. for, with a pre and a post. Okay. Or it also could be assessed when we use the NWEA map scores that students take in the fall, winter, and spring. And one of the reasons why we added the winter was because we want staff members to be able to say, how are my students doing up to this point? Dr. McCarran, do you have any gut feeling talking with the staff? Why there was such a significant drop, especially in sixth and seventh grade, in both the English and the mathematics? Excuse me. I mean, do they have any idea why it's so dramatic in those two years? I think last year there were a lot of different resources provided to staff members. I think that it will, you know, because with all the great, with grade level meetings being much more professional developed, should all be focused with things going on. Sure. I think that it's interesting when we look at third grade that it was the prior year that the literacy consultant was working right only at Bingham and Downey schools that we then saw a significant increase that one year, whereas last year, when we looked at the third grade <coughs> scores, the scores were much lower. Um, this year, this past year, um, our literacy consultant has been working with fourth through eighth grade and working especially also with content area teachers on helping students attack the text and know what they're looking at and do close reading to better understand that. So my hope would be that with all these strategies and build up, this year teachers are, you know. We've got that implementation bit there. We can throw a lot at you. Sure. Oh yeah, that's the evaluation process. It was a lot, but you know, but. 
And when you compare the questions asked, when you compare the questions asked on New Jersey Ask to the sample questions asked on the Park Pilot, it's night and day between what they're asking. It's, it's comparing multiple articles. I can't even do the third grade. I, I, can't do, I, I teach English. I, I couldn't even figure out how to do the third grade sample questions online. I click and drag and move things. Like it's, oh, the way you have to manipulate the test, it's unbelievable. Yeah. For which, yeah, for what you just asked or for the part? part. Oh. There's sample questions. There's just so many different, website. there's so many things uh -huh. that, uh, that impact, like, that, that it's just so different. And, like, I mean, the data is going to pretty much be useless for a but luckily we do have other data sources we'll in place that we, that we will be able to analyze, yeah. which is nice that we have multiple measures to look at. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Now, is it one third grade class in the building? It's going to be two third grade classes in the two third grade classes in Bingham. Okay. Reason being because we now have one inclusion class and we have one regular ed class. And that way the thought process behind it and was recommended was that the teachers who are doing the pilot would be able to consult with each other. The last thing we want to do is sep separate two teachers in the same building where they are no longer even able to plan with one another, but we want it to be successful. So we want two people to be able to collaborate together, or in this case, three, um, special ed, the regular ed, and then the regular ed teacher. Um, so that way we have three, re three different individuals working on the same program. <laughs> And then, of course, during the course of the school year, as um, it's, we're doing the pilot, we will, of course, have other staff members go in to observe lessons, to see how it works, what resources are available, to, um, to get their feedback as well. Okay. That's what I was saying. So third grade teachers at Downing will have visitation time to go and observe as far as their professional development to do this? Mm -hmm. In fourth grade in 2013, you can see both scores went up 47% in 2013, 80% in 2014. Were the new science standard, new science standards are being rolled out at 16. So you said earlier that um, you went to the superintendent's roundtable today. Uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, and there's a hit in the district we talk about, um, especially in the math, because a lot of the director of work on adopting new standards and things like that. Um, nobody was really happy with their scores. Uh, I mean, I asked a lot to do with, with the questions that were, again, not an excuse. You'd like to see them better, but the questions that were being asked, specifically on that common core, teachers' first year using it, it's, you know, it's a lot to ask. And it's not the answer for the kids. Like, I'm not, we're not allowed to look at the test, but sometimes when you look at these kids taking this test, and you know, it's even the sample. Well, and I think what you said, like, it, they may have mastered certain sections, but then, you know, one or two questions, or, or one or two sections that out of five that you're not, you can throw the numbers off completely. Not saying that we don't need to improve those sections, but. Well, will that part have changed, do you think, on anything? I read an article where it's there were some teachers that couldn't even get fired because they were refusing to get that. I saw that. I don't see anything. Yeah. It's, it's here. Some states have opted out. We're ready for it. You know, again, we didn't make the problem. Yeah, no, we have to be right. right. with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> And it's looking at it from a different perspective. When you were administering the paper-based test, what do you do if the student opens up a wrong section? What do you do if a student, you know what I mean, gets sick? And you know, they always say, you gotta bag it up and send it in, in the garbage bag to, you know. But um, it's different issues. You're gonna deal with different problems using different methods. And what I mean by, like, if you, you know when you took a test when you were younger, you would go back in, so, uh, right, you'd go back in, you'd go back in the passage. 
Now, if you have to find the mean idea, you have to highlight it, click it, pull it drag right it, section. and pull it into the to the text box. Which for a third grader to do, I mean, I have a second grader at home. Yeah. For a third grader to do, I mean, talk about test anxiety. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's going to be a whole new level. Last year, we piloted the park assessment with fourth mm -hmm. and seventh grade. They liked it. Greg, and I think it. it's because they're used, they're used to doing the map assessment. So I don't think it was that they, they enjoyed doing it online. One issue I can tell you right now, though, is like language arts. They give you a text box this big for an essay. They don't tell you that the box will expand. So one thing that many teachers saw was that students would fill the box and then we go, I'm done. Because I, and then go to the next question. So it's making sure that, you know, we're speaking with them about, you know, what an essay is and just because you get to a certain point, because on New Jersey S, when you hit a certain point, you were done. You couldn't add on pages. So it's, you know, changing that idea and making sure that they're aware. Does anybody have any other questions for Dr. McCarran at this time? Thank you, Dr. McCarran. So what we'll do is we'll just continue on with um, the agenda. Um, September 24th, we're just going to look through the agenda to see if anybody has any questions. So I'm just going to go um, for for all of us tech savvy board members now. Well, uh, if there's any questions with approval of minutes, any questions on minutes? No. How about on the reports? I have questions, but schedules, everything, you know, it's just making sure that we're accommodating all the correct okay. students with students coming in. Um, but for the most part, everything is status quo. Okay. What um, are our numbers as far as busing this year? Numbers, last I checked, we were at 54 students total in the district. Okay. And from where? The it majority was, of the students are coming from where? Um, Percentage-wise, I can get those numbers no, for I mean, you. No, I don't need percentage. But, I mean, in some cases, it would be homeless. DCPMP, which would be um, state cases, then we have special education, <coughs> hazardous route, mm -hmm. um, and making sure all those were addressed. Okay. However, we have no increase in the number of buses that we are currently using okay. within the district. How did the Chromebook distribution go? Uh, I, would, I would rather not talk about it since everything is going very well. Oh, okay. Well, there's a little piece of wood next to you, for superstitious. <laughs> like, right. I'm like, I'd rather not speak to okay. it. Be, I was just I, asking because um, um, a lot of my colleagues were asking about it because they heard that we were doing it, and you know, being a high school, they were wondering how it was going. With I have a child who received one, and I think it's gone wonderful. Just so you know. I saw them. They asked walk through my sixth and seventh grade hall. They just went down. The day they got them, later on that afternoon. Now they're open. Now they're open. Kids were excited to use them. They were sharing stuff. They were across the room sharing stuff with one another. Now we're still waiting for some more of them to come in class. Ms. Malatesta sent me an email today telling me that they have officially shipped. Okay. Um, so I will believe that as soon as I see them. And then once we receive them, it is about a two day turnover. Mr. Benora, the technology teacher, and Ms. Swen, our technology um, consultant specialist, worked extremely hard on making sure that everything went out as quickly and nicely as possible. So we're still on target as far as, I think last meeting you said mid-October, you were hoping that... Well, I was told October 30th, so we're actually ahead of schedule of where it should be. So usually once we get that email, it's about a week turnaround. around. So we'll see how quickly we get them from now. Ah! <laughs> 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 Let's 
still, what grade levels again? It's six and seven. It's six and seven. I'm just telling. I'm just saying. Back up to your report, Dr. McCarran. You established contracts for the districts for homeless students. Correct. Now, how exactly does that work? One of the issues that we have is sometimes we receive students who might be considered homeless from other districts. Something that we're changing in the office this year is as soon as we know that, we are generating contracts to send to those <coughs> districts for us taking the students. So we're pretty much charging those districts for having those students in front of me. Um, Ms. DeMatties, um, our social worker, does a phenomenal job as a homeless liaison. However, sometimes she has difficulty getting people to call her back. Um, so on the business end, if I'm able to help her with that by sending out contracts for um, annual tuition payments, um, things seem to move a little bit quicker. I know that last year we as a board were like discussing how diligent we needed to be about that, but just so everyone knows, I'm a friend that works for another district that just had literally is in the midst of a humongous lawsuit for trying to, it's a discrimination <coughs> because they try to say, you know, whatever, and it falls under, it was horrible. So I'm sure that between Michelle and you, you are doing a wonderful job, and I know that last year, we had discussed it because there were a lot of students. Well, yeah, because I, like, I again, sign off on a lot of contracts, yeah. every, so that's no. why we wanted to be sure that Absolutely. we were doing the same thing. Right. Absolutely. So, I mean, you know, we're okay in the legal department as far as the way that works between yes. the, the sending yes. district and us. Okay. Correct. Just make sure and one of the things that we're making sure that we have, though, is of course we're going to accommodate any student who's coming to our district, but we need to make sure that certain documents are in hand to show that we are responsible. We have, of course, we're going to accept the student, but we're going to continue to um, get that information and make sure that yeah. it is the correct place right. for the exactly. student. Yeah. And sometimes you will see contracts posted on your agenda, mm -hmm. and you might see multiple ones, but you have to realize that not every contract is fully, fully given. Because yeah. a lot of times, um, you might have to sign off or approve a contract, and then all of a sudden, the district calls us and says, takes care of a situation, so then the contract might be null and void. Uh, okay. So it's making sure that we're doing our due diligence on our part to make sure everything's in order, which is why I know there was a concern last year with the number of homeless students that we were receiving, but we weren't collecting money, okay. and that wasn't necessarily the case. So when I pulled the numbers, it was, our numbers weren't that high, but it was the fact that you were seeing it seeing on it a monthly basis. Right. Okay. Every transportation thing that comes up, and. Um, my office will tell you that, you know, we get transportation changes in certain situations on a regular basis. So. That's a human fact. You can't help that. Yes. Jason, have you attended um, N NJSIG meeting? Or, uh, what is NJSIG? New Jersey School Insurance Group. Insurance Group. It's our insurance okay. group that deals okay. with liability in the district. Okay. Workman's Comp. Mm -hmm. um, all of that. Okay. Slips and falls. Oh, we're okay with all those parameters for that. Correct. Okay. And how many you had over requests for what meetings? There were over requests, um, two of them outside vendors. And what is in the teacher contract handbook? The superintendent's office and my office in terms of um, salary got to third plus the salary part, okay. finalizing all that stuff okay. so that way they can receive it. This, uh, Mr. Ryan, Chief, for Mrs. Yazzie, as far as math testing for the nowhere elementary, is everything okay? I mean, I noticed that Matt on, on her note that testing is supposed to begin this week. I believe testing is up and running. Okay, um, so everything's okay, okay as far as you know. Yeah. Okay. Just get it for everybody. One, one fell swoop instead of taking two or three weeks. Like okay, 
I was noticing also in the nurses' reports, the nurses are here. Maybe you could answer this for me. Uh, nurses reported that uh, staff members, some staff members, were volunteering to take EpiPen training and CPR. Yes. And another uh, staff, as far as I think, was old school. Um, this person was concerned about uh, diabetes in the district. Well, is it possible? No, my question is: Is it possible for number one, all staff members to be yes. in service um, and to be for diabetes? Part for, di for, for diabetes, that's part of the GCN training that we just okay. had more last week. Okay. Now, okay. How much is Mark? How many on GCN training? About thirteen. Thirteen. GCN expert. It's online. It, um, oh, so they're <laughs> wonderful. They're yeah. lots of fun. I did five of them today. Thirteen. As far as <laughs> other, they, yeah, um, the blue gun that that's always based specifically with um what I'm asking is is it possible as far as the teachers professional development time to be in service to that? Yes, they, they will be but the nurses will be doing it is uh during some grade level meetings and Mr. Peter Lee says yes we have arranged for the nurses to come to provide Additional diabetes training, additional EpiPen, additional C some other CPR management, some staff. So yes, we are. Okay. We received about a week, two weeks ago, the mandated. Uh, I put that in my report. The mandated um, statutory regulatory guidance regarding uh, what the teachers need to do, mm -hmm. and a lot of those things we brought up are in yeah, that. that's so, so that's why we add the additional GCN trainings as well. Okay. There's not. The department comes up is I mean, the amount of stuff we have to do. Mm -hmm. There's only so much time for school. Right, I know, but you also, looking at the big picture, you also have to remember that part of our job here is the safety of the children. And those two areas, actually with CPR, there's three areas that's so important and that's why for the that's safety why of our children. You know, I, 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 I put them you know, above, I put I put them above the same blood work package that you guys seen back <laughs> No, I, no, <laughs> no, I agree. Well, I agree. Important, you know, any type yes. of with the diabetic concerns or other medical concerns, yeah. we have just pop up this week. Yeah, we are addressing that to make sure that they're Okay, so I just don't want it to be on a need-to-know basis no. or a volunteer basis. I don't, I don't agree with In that. In some cases, though, depending on the training. So, for example, Mr. Wink is officially certified as an instructor for CPR. With okay. Janet's law, we need to have five members in every building mm -hmm. attend the training for that. Janet's law is the AED. AED CPR. So right. you need five right. critical team members. That being said, though, we have increased the number of AEDs in each building by one. So now each building is up to, I think we have four in this building, and we have three in the two elementary schools. Um, in addition to that, we will make sure that five staff members are trained in CPR, and now that we have someone in-house who can do that. But in some cases, it's offering their own time to make sure that they can do it. Uh, Mr. Wink doing the trainings, he can only do certified 10 at a time within one training. Right. So that's why it's out, at times it could be outside of the school day that they're volunteering to do it. So we're, we're trying to see who's willing to do it because you might not want to be someone who's going to be a critical responder in a situation. Yeah, but yeah. My, my, my point to make is you never know. You never know whatever staff member is around, you know, which may be walking down the hallway and a child collapses in front of him with no other staff members around. So I think it's really important for this district to make sure that their teachers and give them professional development time towards it. Which we have to share. That that, and that's the way you know it should be. But I just think it's something, I don't know, how does everybody else feel about it? Well, I feel like you indicating that we have to put the safety of our children first. Yes. Hello, I'll remind you of four years ago when we did everything in this district to save a nurse in every building. Yes. I think we let the community know that we, their children's safety is in our best interest. Absolutely. Okay, because I just, that kind of, we like just can't force, you know, we can't No, I'm not saying to dig it yeah. up. No. I think our staff is wonderful, and I will tell you, I have friends within this district that have diabetic children, and she said to me just two weeks ago, you know how nice it is, and these were her words for freedom, to send a box in with, and she said the son's name, and she said it's so comforting that, you know, we still have the, the staff and the nurses in, in place that we do, and her son has been, you know, all the way through the district. So that same comfort level that existed in Bingham exists here, and, and it was just, and this is somebody that would be a critical, you know, have critical comments if, you know, she's 
like me, she'll point out the good, but she'll let you know the bad. And she just that, just her telling you that, mm -hmm. whether her telling you that as a friend or whatever, it, it made me feel like we as a board have done everything we have to make sure that the staff that we have in place, whether it be administration, teachers, everyone, um, and I believe we as a board, I can't say that anybody here would believe that any child in this district safety is not first. Right. Yes, it's education okay. first, but safe while you're here learning. Absolutely, I, and I agree with that point as well. And I certainly do. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was like, wait, we, re I really, oh, I want everyone to know that I think our children are safer. I feel like, you know, the more the merrier. But I'm CPR certified. If I'm in the building, that day happens, we, I got your back. Well, then, could I, I like a comment about our safety of our children here. Mm -hmm. I had a uh, opportunity today to go to Triton High School uh, to pick something up in the main office. And uh, I'd like to recommend that our superintendent and the principals uh, maybe during the course of this year uh, make a point to go over and see their security system that they have set up and think about and finding out the cost and maybe incorporating that into next year's school budget. When I got to the school there, <coughs> as soon as you enter the building and you're stopped, you have to have your driver's license out. They scan the back of your driver's license. It goes into a computer system. You all, they also take your picture and prints out a badge for you to wear. But Samantha pointed out to me that this system will also print up immediately and let the person know that then they can notify administration. If you're on Megan's list, if you're a child predator, mm -hmm. maybe if you have a felony or any kind of problem, if you're not a legal resident of the county or of that town, um, so, the only thing it's bringing up is Megan's law. They pull yeah. all the other warrants out of it because that people would be a problem okay. for people. Right. Absolutely. The only thing. I can't it, was, I well, it did, it did, it did. It can tell. Like it I mean, did, did flag. It did flag someone the other, other day whose license wasn't in district. Mm -hmm. It's a good yeah. school. I mean, oh, their license good. isn't in district. You know, that's a residency is. issue. I mean, that's easy. Boom. It just it flagged it right away. So. How, however, there is one fault in the security system there that would make it better. I got into the building. Mm -hmm. I can hand him anything, and then if I had an idea I wanted to do what hurt someone, I can take off. And the Your badge says where you're the, going. Well, the point I'm making is you shouldn't right. get into the building mm -hmm. until you've That's done that right. step, and they know you're an okay person to come in, you're really the parent, blah, blah, blah. They come in. I was in the building before I even got the sticker. I can take off if I have a weapon and hurt somebody because I'm in the building. Uh, maybe it needs to be a partitioned area uh, so that they can't get into the corridors and move on. But I did like the system. However, if I were doing the system here in our schools, it would be you walk into a partitioned area, you can't get past that point until we've done the check. But I like the system they have. It would be very, very effective. Technology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's scary. Does anybody have any other um, questions on reports? I still have a few more. Go ahead. If you want me to continue. I want you to continue. Okay. Um, we can go right through during the regular session. Yes, yeah, exactly. I promise I won't, do it. I won't interrupt there. Uh, as far as Butch, um, that you mentioned the backstop. Yes. Being demolished. Uh, what are the plans as far as replacing the fencing down there? Well, we're going to put a, a, a gap fence between the area where the backstop was. Is it going to be as high as the backstop or what? It'll be as high as the regular fencing. The regular there. fencing, okay. And also thank you for the radio communication for staff members that are outside, administration, and also lunch aids and PE staff. I'm glad to see that that's back. Yes. We had it a, a while ago, mm -hmm. but it kind of fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad to see that that's back. And it's, and it's been working good. really well. Good, yeah, good, 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 yeah. good comments. Very good. That's good. Now, Lori, as far as special ed, the transfers of children in and out of the district, was it because of children moving, coming in and out, or is it because of programs that we either don't have, that we're you're sending them out, or programs we do have that they're coming here? No, uh, transfer out or they're moved out of the district. Okay. <coughs> transfer ins are coming in because they moved into the district. Okay. All right, thanks. Now, I have a policy question, too. You want to well, we're going to go through. That? that was reports, and then we're going to okay. go through finance. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So then if we look through, um, every, everyone else is good for reports? Um, excuse me, but I'm not being able to do that. <laughs> the reports. Excuse me. I go. Step step away. Away. 
Do I have the regular? Oh, I have you just click on the report. Yeah, yeah, just touch the report. I see. <laughs> I was in the agenda. So I was in the agenda. You were in the agenda. I was in the agenda. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amy wants to train everybody. Yeah, yeah. 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 Come sit next to me. Do you have a question on the course, Naomi? No, I don't. Okay, I struggle. I just say. All right, sounds good. So we'll move along to finance then. Um, the different reports there. Yep, finance. Any issues with finance? So if you have a, yeah, so you can go on the agenda, but if you have a specific report that you remember you had a question on, you can pull it up right there by Thank clicking you. on it. You're welcome. Gotcha. Thank you. What's that? It's the accounting. Accounting principles. General accounting principles for school business administrators. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he Saturday. made that himself. So <laughs> I'm going to. It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. <laughs> well, I skipped property and transportation because I was looking at the wrong screen. So, property and transportation. Any any issues with field trips, use of facilities? Any any questions or issues there? I'm sorry, I skipped. Property and transportation. Everybody's okay. What is it under? I don't have property and transportation. Anything on the agenda? You have to click on the, on the agenda, agenda at the top. I am on the agenda. Wait, no, you're not. Hold on. There you go. Click on that. Click on. I got it, Amy. You, but you didn't back me up, Amy. Oh, I'm sorry. Amy, there were people with questions. Sorry. So I'm going to go after reports. I'm going to go to. Go to um, I'll trade you on your new Chromebook. Buddy. Property and transportation. Just for uh, sake of time. Property and transportation. Oh, are there any issues that. there? Personnel. Now there's finance there, professional development workshops. Yep. I'm not timing out. Yeah. I don't know where this falls, but. I don't know where this falls, but there is certain any communication with the district and the police department as to where crossing guards are. Okay. What communication would you like to know? I'd like to know about communication as to the routes children are supposed to walk. That came home like a paper went home. Okay. So here's what we need to do. We need to do something about it, and it needs to go home again with a map for children that are crossing at the intersection of Clemens Bridge and the Black Horse Pike, because they are still crossing there, including my niece that did it last week again, and it's St. Teresa's is doing it as well. I crossed two little boys from St. Teresa's across in front of the Philly Diner in Southern Luigi's. Um, so there's no so I went to the police station, after I watched them two days in a row do it on my way to Bingham. And I crossed them, and then I went to the police station with my kids and scared the life out of them. It was a good thing. It was healthy encouragement. And um, they told me that there are big communication between the district, and I wanted to make sure that we sent another half sheet home or we did something with a map because it is, there, there's no one stopping. Right, because there is no one anymore at right. Clemens Bridge and Black Horse Park. You know what? The reason that and, and you know what? The reason yeah. that crossing guard was taken away is because not many people. Police department. That's a police department shot. I don't know why they did it. We got the information as far as why there was no one there. But there because there were but there was like three kids that used it. The problem is the three kids that use it are the three that are at risk right now. Well, and it's coming from St. Teresa's as right. well. And I Absolutely. But here's the funny thing. I didn't know. And then Chris says to me, oh, um, she, our niece was crossing there at the beginning of the week. And he asked her, come get in the car. Why are you crossing here? You should oh, go up to, to JFK. Yeah. So I was like, well, wait a minute. What do you mean she's crossing there? Like, yeah. I went ballistic. Because they, what they want them to do is yeah. to walk a block beyond. Where they need go to go. back up Clemens Bridge to JFK building. 
and cross where Downing is supposed to cross. Right. And that's yeah, not what's happening. No. Yeah. Because I think when you look at the large plans, that's where it opens well, up. Oh, so it's a huge issue, yes. Four yes. versus Why? third and Black Horse Pike, where it's single. Well, you know what? Lane. You know what? That's when, like, like there's a council person who used to be the crossing guard there. And, and can, the flip side of it is, is truthfully, yes. uh, the reason I'm sure it's not from lack of usage was because of lack of cars stopping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I just said? In other words, the crossing guard. They took the crossing guard away because because it was dangerous for her. Well, so my concern is this. I'm going to go apply for that job. So that my concern is this. I don't know if it's possible to have a police officer there because there are plenty of districts Hello. that have a police officer I'm not, I'm at major right. intersections. And you know, for some reason, light flashing does make a difference. But I just I don't want to see something happen to any child because no matter what district it's school they go to. Right. We, yeah. I mean. Yeah. No. That's. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. We. Uh, Mark will look into it tomorrow. Okay. Um, just for sake of time, I'm just going to ask that you look under curriculum. Any issues under curriculum? Curriculum is, is basic, and I just wanted to move down to A because Lynn said she had a question on policy. Yes. Um, I actually printed the answer. I'm assuming Sean, these are just a brief. Synopsis of what each policy entails. Correct. Okay. And what changes there were. Okay. Uh, my my question is for the policy with electronic communication between staff and students. I believe it is Correct. three two eight three. Um, it talked with Strauss and Esme, Esme. They they recommended um, defining the word improper communication. Have we ever had any discussion or dialogue on what? Our policy either does read already or what it should read as far as improper, what the word improper means to this particular policy. It just seemed to be very gray when I read just the summary what's acceptable protocols, what's improper communication, and what it actually says in our new policy guide. Remember, we worked on that policy thing? Policy 3283. Yeah, it is new. It's, it's a new it's one. Yes, it is it's new. It's not one that you have. No, it's mandatory. We're talking about on an old policy. Yes. The technology that's coming. Exactly. But I just thought, you know. Is there a place there like where you feel like we need to add additional information in? Well, I don't have the she whole the policy in front of me, so I, that's what I guess. And these are all for second readings, correct? correct. Yes. Okay, so I guess I must have missed. Do you want to table that one? I just, that next one. Month? Yeah, but I just think we as a board need to look at the whole policy as it reads with recommendations from Strauss Eschmann just to see what they're asking or what they're telling us or recommending what is improper communication versus acceptable protocols with the policy and the regulations. What is that being in the student handbook? Um, we can either do one of two things, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. McCarran. We can just table that particular policy tonight and wait until next month, or we can approve it and then just uh, make an addendum. I mean, I, I would be more comfortable, and, and you can disagree with me and, and that, and if, we, if you want. I would like to have it in place since the school year started, so I'd like it to go through, um, just because I don't need to remind everyone how important that is. Um, however, um, and then we can go back, we'll get a copy of it, and we'll, we'll, we'll add to whatever we want next. We'll do that at the work session of next month. Okay, that, if we can just write, okay? if, if, you know, the board can just read through yep. this summary and talk about and have a, an idea as far as right. what we want to say is in proper communication. Yes. And how it will align with our local policy versus what they're mandating. That that sounds okay. like it. So that'll okay. give us something to do in the work session next okay. next month. So everybody okay with that? Approving yes. it then? Okay. Yes. Thank you. No, nope. thank you. Are there any other questions? If not, I'm going to um, ask for a motion to adjourn the work session. Make a motion to adjourn the work session. Second. Second. Motion made by Naomi, seconded by Amy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have.